Mirror, migration-related risks caused by misconceptions of opportunities and requirement. I think I can take this off while I'm, while I'm speaking. Okay, hi. So, uh, As Aitana said, I'm Gerhard from uh, Hensold. It used to be Salebs, for those of you who still remember that, speech, artificial intelligence, and languages. We're now Hensold and partner of the Mirror Consortium. I'd like to walk you through a few of the technologies that we've been looking at uh, within one of the work packages dealing with text analysis methods. Um, I've kept it pretty non-technical, and I hope uh, it's going to make sense here, but just a few of the activities that we've been looking at and uh, maybe a rationale of why. Uh, first of all, we're using the back end for the sources and for the content. Um, and of course, it's very important what we're looking at. We've been talking about social media a lot today. Um, my opinion is that we should not forget traditional media. In certain parts of the world, traditional media, radio, are the information source number one even to today. Uh, and they also form maybe a small, maybe a large, I don't know, uh, part of uh, what impression people may get about Europe and what perception they may form on, based on that. Um, the uh, detecting the entities, for those of you who are familiar with the technology, you will see that we've done a little bit uh, beyond the, I would say, standard persons, organizations, and locations. We've done a bit of work on anonymization, pseudonymization, just to show you that, of course, we're also aware of these ethical and privacy, and in Europe, GDPR-related uh, factors. Bot detection is something that you'll hear about, you have heard about already several times today, and you will, in addition, hear about it even more, uh, because bots do play a role, uh, stronger or lesser role, as we'll see. Uh, topic detection, the identification of news about the European Union, because maybe it's not that easy to say just because uh, a couple of uh, entities are mentioned, a couple of locations are mentioned, that this is really about Europe and it's uh, furthermore related about migration. We've done a bit of work on hate speech detection. We've heard about sentiment analysis already today. I'll show you a couple of examples, and we've also done work on the detection of anomalies. I won't have time to go into details on all of them, so I'll just walk you through a few of them. First of all, we're working in the Mirror project with end users, and of course the end users have very good ideas of what sources of information they're looking at, what sources of information they trust, what sort of constitutes their universe of sources. And uh, over the uh, duration of the project, we have not only added sources, and those are just symbolic pictures on the left-hand side, so those are some that we, we added, but we've also... <laughs> We've also assigned uh, origins to those sources because very often, not very often, but in several cases, the language gives away the origin, but you may want to be able to distinguish, let's say between a Turkish source, but one coming from Germany is gonna give you a very different picture of what's going on in Germany, maybe also the migration policy than a Turkish source coming from Turkey. Uh, so you want the language, but you also do want the origin, and we've been assigning that uh, to all of our web sources. Um, the image on the right-hand side just shows you that certain uh, news outlets, even BBC World, um, I mean, it is world, and it's worldwide in a sense, but there's still some uh, gray parts or one of these red parts, that uh, blue parts, that uh, show you that it's not the regions in the world that even BBC World is not talking about a lot. The entities uh, that you may have heard of, uh, persons, organizations, and locations, Robert is going to Paris tomorrow, timestamps, those would be the standard ones, but uh, as I don't know who mentioned it, but it has been mentioned before that we're trying to do this in a multilingual way, and we did go beyond the regular persons, organizations. Uh, so you could see concepts like, uh, I, I added a couple that were mentioned by various speakers today, the Fortress Europe. Somebody mentioned the digital Fortress Europe today. Uh, so that's in there. We had, I think, the uh, topic of sexual exploitation in the trafficking uh, presentation today. Forced labor is probably also was mentioned there as far as I know. Um, refugee policy, I think, has come across many, many times today. The asylum process or family reunification. What we've been doing is adding all of those in all of the relevant languages uh, in our project. Anonymization, this is just a little screenshot here. Uh, this is in another interface, not the one that you're about to see, but it's one where we prepare data for Mirror. And uh, what you just have to uh, acknowledge here is that you don't see everything. You see these uh, pink, I guess it is, uh, parts 
where even though you may be looking for migration, there are certain persons mentioned, person names mentioned, and we've been working on a, on a component that notices when person names are being mentioned and it excludes it. Uh, it is stored in a vault. Not everybody has access. People with the right authority do have access, but this is sort of coded and locked away, so not everybody can see all of that uh, personal information. The EU topics that's uh, kept us busy for a long time, uh, entities of certain uh, names of certain uh, North Macedonia locations, Bulgaria, the EU or NATO organizations may give away some of the information, but by looking into when is Europe talked about in different parts of the world, how is Europe presented, and comparing that to how maybe the same subject, the same topics are presented in Europe, and then comparing that, we found that the, the entities alone are part of the truth, but they're certainly not the full truth. You need context, I think, was the lesson that we learned of it, the surrounding context, where they live. And the two examples that you can see is uh, both uh, talk about Europe, that's right, but if you have a, a, a news uh, snippet here talking about film industry shooting locations, well, that, uh, among other things, also has something to do with Europe, but it's, uh, it's not very relevant when it comes to migration in Europe. So you do need the entities, they give you some of the information, but you do need the context furthermore. Hate speech, we've had sentiment analysis already today. Um, emotion analysis, we're not into hot anger versus cold anger versus joy, uh, but um, a lot of the information is emotionally loaded. And whether you like it or don't, when you read it, it'll get to you on an emotional level and it'll stick in, in your brain. Uh, in other words, it will influence your perception. And uh, we've been looking into, also again, multilingual, uh, first of all, sentiment analysis, but then furthermore, also hate speech detection, because unfortunately, migrants are often the target of hate speech. Uh, we're using a hybrid and multilingual approach, and I've given you some examples in various languages here plus an image, because we're not only working on audio and on text in this project, we're also working on visuals, as you'll also shortly be hearing. And just as a placeholder, uh, this visual here, of course, does have text on it, but uh, even the, the raft or this boat on, on the waves, of course, is also giving you a certain message already.